Good evening, everyone. <laughs> it's time to read. All right, so we left off on a good note last time. So let's continue. And then this is going to be the first time that I'm going to create a short version uh, in YouTube Shorts with this. So I'm going to try something new. So, let's get started. I'm having so much fun with this. I love that y'all are enjoying it. Because I'm enjoying it. Because I love to read. And Kimberly's at the age where um, she she doesn't really like to be read to. She'd prefer to read it herself. Every now and then she wants to be read to. But I'll leave it up to her. Kind of like this. Anyway, all right, let's see. Where was I? Um, I'll just start at the beginning of the page because I can't remember. So I know I'll probably reread some of it. To her left, the waterfall pours down the cliff into a wide lagoon, giving rise to a light mist. Briar stops a moment to take it all in. She listens to the spellbinding sounds that fill the air, and she feels a response welling up from deep within herself. Now, this is where she's at the waterfall. Briar steps out into the clearing and begins to dance. Oh, no, this is where she's dancing. Okay, I went back really far on the page. I might have been on the other page. But that's okay. Y'all don't mind to hear it again, do you? Okay. Uh, Briar steps out into the clearing and begins to dance. Her feet moving almost of their own accord. It seems as if her whole body is made of music. Her pain falls away and she feels as free and innocent as if she had awakened from a bad dream. She sways and twirls and tosses her head. Woo! Did the light change? I'll try to stand still. I'm standing tonight because I'm hurting. <laughs> Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Her pain falls away and she feels as free and innocent as if she had awakened from a bad dream. She sways and twirls and tosses her head, casting a long dancing shadow while the sun slips toward the horizon and the sunlight on the wall of rock deepens to red. She feels that she is shining, radiant, Opening her arms to the sky, she reaches after an idea that is tickling at the edges of her mind. Some lovely thought is right there. She longs for it, but it is just out of reach and it eludes her. The sunset turns to violet and the blue shadows lengthen. The music fades and Briar slows and meanders to a halt. Sitting down in the middle of the clearing, panting slightly, the girl realizes how tired she is and how hungry. Now she looks around in the gathering shadows and wonders what to do. She knows she can't find her way home. Wow, I dropped this book. I may have put it way back too far. I may have to redo this video. I'm not sure because I don't want y'all to have to listen to half of it over again. Now she looks around in the gathering shadows and wonders what to do. She knows she can't find her way home, but somehow she no longer wishes to be devoured by wild animals. She wonders if she might spend the night in a tree. Yeah. As she sits lost in contemplation, she hears a rustling at the edge of the clearing and takes fright. Yeah, y'all, I dropped this book. Jack, Jack, my Jack, is that you, son? Okay, wait a minute. Lady Beatrice dragged her off. Then she starts thinking about her dear eccentric godmother Hill. That's too far. So no, I didn't go too far. As she sits lost in contemplation, she hears a rustling at the edge of the clearing and takes fright. <clears throat> Raising herself to a crouch, getting ready to run, out of the shadows comes Jack, her loyal squire of only a few hours before. God's feet, he exclaims. What a dance that was. If I could do that, I'd make me a living dancing for the king and queen. Yeah, I'm repeating myself, sorry. Briar, who is both relieved and affronted by his presence, hardly knows how to respond. 
You saw Squire, she says, not sure whether to be embarrassed. I couldn't help it. It was just that fine and awesome. I had to watch. Me Ma set me to following you again when she seen you all alone and headed for the woods. Yeah, that's when I said those are good people. She said it boded no good and I ought to bring you back. So I followed your singing. It was like being under a spell. It was. I am never going back, Briar interrupts him. I'll sit in a tree tonight. Oh, that wouldn't do at all, miss. It gets damp and chilly at night here. Can't you feel it coming on already? You'd catch your death. <clears throat> Excuse me. And why? Just think what would happen if you fell asleep. You'd fall right out of the tree and break your head. And won't everybody be looking for you and wondering what's becoming of you? No. Nobody cares a fig. Well, maybe one person, she says, thinking of Rose and the agonized expression in her eyes. We're back on track now. As Lady Beatrice dragged her off, then she starts thinking about her dear eccentric godmother, Hilda, Hilda, and wonders if she has heard of Briar's crime and her terrible punishment, a crime that she's innocent of, and whether Hilda still loves her. Oh, my. The queen, too, has often been kind. Would they care what had become of her? Not ready to think of home? She wipes her moist eyes with the back of her hand and pushes the thoughts from her mind. Why don't you come with me, then? Jack says. Me ma will greet you kindly. Though there ain't much to eat, only you'd better decide quick, as these here woods will soon be dark. And I've no mind to be caught in the deep forest at night. Can't say I blame him. I don't like being caught in the woods here at night. Mountain lions, bobcats. Yeah, it's not fun. It takes very little time for Briar to consider that this boy's home, however common, would be a better place to spend the night than the wild forest. Your most gracious offer is gratefully accepted. She answers in her best court manners. Oh, are you still Sir Lancelot? He asks her timidly. <laughs> or should I call you something else? When they were pretending. Briar shies away from introducing herself as Lady Briar. She instinctively feels it would be like bragging to this humble boy. Just call me Briar. She says simply, lead the way. Taking her by the hand and leading her, Jack heads back toward the setting sun into the woods and onto a narrow path. They fumble between the trees in the dim light. Their ears are attuned to every sound, but it is twilight, the time when everything is draped in tints of cobalt blue and creatures of the forest pause in their motions and pray. All is hushed except the noise of their own soft footsteps on the packed earth and the occasional swishing of ferns and small branches as they pass by. After a while, they are walking in near darkness, but Jack is still able to make out the path. They continue on until they have reached the edge of the little thicket where they played that day. Suddenly, Briar feels shy. How will Jack's mother react when she sees her face? She hesitates. But Jack pulls her along by the hand, saying, Come on, we're almost there. <clears throat> out of the woods and up the road they go, and soon Briar makes out the dim shape of a hut in the gloom and a figure leaning out over the lower half of the door. Jack, my Jack, is that you, son? The figure calls. It's me, mother. I'm back, safe and sound. Do y'all see the light changing? Hmm. Aren't electronics funny? Hmm. Wonder who's here. <laughs> anyway. 
He drags Briar forward to the door and on into the house, where his little old mother gets her first good look at the girl. She does not recoil or make the sign against the evil or send her away like the other villagers did. But she, but she takes a moment to adjust and then envelops Briar in her bony embrace, noticing as she does that the child winches in pain. That's so strange. I'm going to lean in and see if it changes. You know, when electronics act strange. Okay, anyway, if you know, you know. But she takes a moment to adjust and then envelops Briar in her bony embrace, noticing as she does that the child winces with pain. Come in, come in, little one. Thank heaven you are safe. There are wild beasts abroad in the night forest, you know. Come and share our fire and welcome. I'm called Mother Mudge. In the feeble light, the woman's hollow-cheeked and careworn face glows with its own kind of beauty. Transmuted by love and kindliness. And Briar feels welcome. Aww. She looks around her and sees two cows stabled at one end of the hut and chickens running loose about the one room, scratching in the straw spread over the earthen floor. One cow chooses that moment to lift her tail and expel a pile of dung. And Briar is struck by the strong smell that quickly permeates the air. As Jack and his mother take no notice of it, she does her best to ignore it, too. Mother Mudge leads her to the dreary peat fire that burns in the center of the room. The little woman sits on a three-legged stool and stirs something in a pot suspended above the fire. You must be hungry. I hope this isn't getting on y'all's nerves. Which it's about time for me to end this video anyway. This video has been a little all over the place this time. Which, it's unrehearsed and you're gonna get me. And at times, I'm a little all over the place. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's, let me read. Mother Mudge leads her to the dreary peat fire that burns in the center of the room. The little woman sits on a three-legged stool and stirs something in a pot suspended above the fire. You must be hungry, she says to the children. Sit down. Let's get some food in you. And then you can tell me about all your adventure. She ladles the thin soup she is cooking into heavy wooden bowls for them as the children sit cross-legged on the floor. That, I like that. Jack rescued her, brought her back to his house, and his mom is a loving mom. And I'm starting to see a pattern here. Usually when you experience trauma, you're usually then placed usually not always but usually you have someone that loves you and reminds you that love does exist so hmm i'm liking this so far a few triggering moments but it's a good storyline we're getting further along Hope everybody has a great night. Take care.